amongst women. So thanks very much, ladies, for, uh, for joining on the stage uh, today. Uh, Janae, if I can start with yourself, we'll get straight into it because our time is limited enough. The NBA calls itself a global brand, but what does that mean specifically as it relates to audience engagement? So I'll, I'll tell you a little story. I was in um, California, which is my hometown, uh, San Francisco Bay Area, uh, about two weeks ago. And I was catching up with some friends I hadn't seen in probably a good 10, 15 years. And as everyone's talking about kind of what do you do and what, you know, where are you now in your, in your career? And I said, I, I live in London and I work for the NBA. And I head up marketing for international. And they said, well, what, what do you market? Do you market the players, you market the team? And I was, I was thinking, what do you mean, what do we market? We're in, you know, we're in 215 countries around the world through TV, uh, through our uh, merchandise business. Video gaming is, is really uh, big for us. We stage over 150 events around the world. And then I had to step and take, uh, take a step back and really kind of listen to what they were saying. And I think anybody who is not a millennial, a little bit older than millennials, um, the way that you became a fan, the way I became a fan, I'm from San Francisco, so I followed the teams that I had grown up watching or I'd gone to the games. Um, 20 years later, we now realize that with NBA, for example, our 60% of our fan base sits outside of the United States. So the way that people engage is not in the same ways that we did all the way up until, you know, until the last 10 years or so. So for us, being a global brand, what that means is engaging at a local level um, everywhere outside of the U.S. through our digital, through our social platforms, particularly through our social platforms. And how important are the social platforms you use? And which in particular do you find gain the most success when you are engaging with your fans ar around the world? Um, I would say they're absolutely critical to the, to the fan experience. Um, we are everywhere, everywhere that makes sense. So Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, Snapchat. We, I think there's two kind of guiding principles for us. One is that you know, we have often prided ourselves on the fact that we are um, early and often into these platforms. So we have very tight relationships with Silicon Valley. That really started with our um, commissioner the current commissioner, Adam Silver, who is a big believer in technology and a big believer in the fact that technology and social media is really all about engaging fans. Sure. It's actually very important to the fan experience. Um, so we, you know, we, we've, from the days of YouTube and Facebook to just last week, we were the first um, American League to stream a game in uh, VR. So it is... You know, every single angle that we can get and every single way we can help you know, drive the conversation is, is where we focus. Donna, if I can bring you in here, how important is this, I suppose, either from a brand's perspective, a sponsor's perspective, or a sports organization's perspective, that you're talking to the right audience and you're not just making noise in what is a very noisy environment already? Yeah, it's extremely important because if you think about all the content that's being created out on the internet, we start to ignore content after a while if it's not targeted right towards us. And that's why many of the social channels see very, very low rates of click-through rates with content. It's even as low as less than 1%. And so if you don't put your content in a place where you can easily target your audience and make sure they want to receive that content, then you actually become part of the problem of all the content noise. And we see that in, in many of the um, bigger social media channels where there's just so much content and it's um, difficult getting it to the right audience. And is that something that brands and sporting organizations are becoming more and more aware of? Yeah, and, and I think in the sponsorship and the sports team um, relationship, it is, it's very difficult in some of the social channels to actually bring their audience over to the sponsor's content because the sponsor's content looks like an advertisement because they can go to, say, Facebook or Twitter and target a sports team's fan base, but it comes to them as an, a sponsored post or advertising. So it's not the natural engagement. And it's just very, very important, I think, for um, athletes, sports teams, musicians, whoever, that they 
try to engage in a way that it's positive for that sponsor. That's how you get more sponsorship money. Laura, from a, an athlete's perspective, how important is it that when you are engaging on, through social media channels that you know you are speaking to your fans, the people you want to be speaking to? Um, yeah, well, just like Donna said, that, that it's really important that you know your audience. And um, I myself, I'm speaking from a single athlete perspective. So, of course, um, your social media channels, they may be uh, good advertisement uh, channels for your sponsors, but I still really think that the more important is that it's, it's like a tool for branding yourself. So, if you think about those live TV broadcasts, for example, where you are competing and you are fierce and you don't show your personality, it's only like the tip of the iceberg that you can see on TV. So, so I would consider social media channels, they are like your own media channels. So there you can show your personality, show your emotions behind the scenes. So I think the, for, for a single athlete, the most important is that, that you can really build, build a brand of yourself. So that way it, it, it brings you more appealing to sponsorships and for example, in figure skating, we have this show, show business. So it's basically you get invitations if you are very good or you have a good brand, so you're popular. So of course, um, it's really important to, to have a proper even strategy for, for single athletes to, to really engage fans in, in social media. And how have you had to adapt yourself in terms of use of different social media channels and which do you find most beneficial to, to yourself? Mm, I think it's a lot of adaptation. I mean, if I think um, I quit competing five years ago, so as we all know since that social media has changed a yeah. lot and is changing quickly and uh, for example people are going from Facebook to uh, Instagram to Snapchat and Periscope and you have to keep, keep on that phase. So I think it's really important that you are, you are where your audience are. So, so, yeah. And in terms of being an ambassador and an influencer for brands, how aware and conscious are you of, of the content that, that they're putting out on your behalf? Yeah, well, I consider it's very important that, that you don't make a noise, that you really, you need to know your audience, you need to know what kind of fans do you have as your followers, and that's also uh, like a sales argument, of course, for sponsors, but still, it's really important to be very subtle and uh, do it uh, like quality over quantity. Sure. So, so you don't do so much, but more like a very subtle content that gives visibility for your sponsors, but still you look like yourself. So that's content that you would, you would post yourself as well. So it's not that advertising sure. looking. Janae, from the NBA's perspective, how important is the role of influencers on social media? Um, I, I, it's very important. I think that you know we have we had actually done a lot of research, um, traditional research around uh, around our fans and what our you know where our fan segments um, most engage. And I think we have you know we have a unique situation where we. You know, we talk about brands being aspirational and we talk about sports being aspirational and people wanting to be, you know, there was the, the campaign, I want to be like Mike in the, in the 90s, and people wanting to be like athletes. And what we find is that people also find NBA fandom aspirational because if you look at, you know, you're sitting courts or you're looking courtside and you see people like Jay-Z and Rihanna mm -hmm. and David Beckham are fans, being a fan is actually cool. So what we, we actually do quite a bit of work with um, very traditional influencers through celebrities. We also do a lot of work, um, we're doing more work now with um, sort of the non-traditional influencers. So just uh, two weeks ago, we did a, a content activation uh, called Half Court Challenge, which is essentially we get a, a you know, um, 
players, athletes from other sports, we get celebrities together, and they challenge each, each, game, each other to a game of what's essentially horse. And uh, we did this activation with a, uh, an Italian YouTube, a YouTuber called Dexter, who's one of the largest uh, influencers. Sure. So we find in both the traditional and non-traditional space, influencers gives us the kind of reach that you know, you're not going to get organic reach. So we, we really use the influencers to, to drive that. Yeah, and how important is their role in terms of um, gaining fans from what outside might be seen as the traditional fan base. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the, you know, when we talk about our fan segments, we look at core fans, and those are your fans that are going to be there no matter what. Our casual fans and the curious fans are the ones that, you know, you can find those common entry points, and one of those points is that celebrity sort of influencer. Donna, how much of a trend is there, or is there a trend towards more communities that are owned by the fans themselves, so they're only getting content that they want to see? Yeah, that is a, a trend actually for brands as well, that they are um, creating their own branded community so that they can um, better engage in a natural way instead of feeling, looking and feeling like an advertiser. So they invite people into a community that feels good for the audience. That has been a trend for 2015. And then, of course, a lot of um, teams are moving to their own apps, also um, their own branded communities, mm. like the MLB just did their own social media. This is a trend because there's, there is this challenge of really being able to engage with your own audience in some of the um, bigger channels because your content is not necessarily reaching unless you start you know, paying for the content to reach. And, then, and promoting each post. So um, it, is, it is a trend that's, that's happening right now and, and we're, we've been riding on that little trend ourselves with Team Up and we're actually creating that kind of um, natural engagement environment. And it's been so positive that we're seeing 40 to 90% of the fans will actually become a fan of the sponsor after they become a fan of a sports team or league or event or something. So when you create the platform, how do you get? How do you drive the fans toward it? How do you ensure that they're engaging and interacting with the, with each other on it? How, how do we show they're uh, interacting? Yeah. Well, actually, um, we do have a mechanism. It's it's fan ranking, and so um, fans invite other people to be a fan and tell about the community, and they share content out into their social media channels to invite people in and they earn points for this. So it's really nice that the teams and athletes can actually see who their top fans are and reward them. So there's a lot of fun competitions going on and, and fans are winning some really great VIP experiences, of course, which makes them get more engaged. Janae, how difficult is it to make that decision to start engaging with a new platform? Like you have your YouTubes, your Facebooks, the, the traditional ones that we all know about. Yeah. Making that decision to engage with a new platform, how much, of it, how much thought has to go into that before you would engage? Yeah, we, we're, we're, we're very um, careful and very sort of thoughtful about, uh, about that because the, the, the one thing that you don't want to lo lose is your authentic authenticity. Um, we also want to make sure that the audience that that potential partner is bringing is the right one for us. And we want to make sure that you know, we're giving that authentic voice. Um, because you have, we have so many different types of fans that are sitting all, you know, all over the world that we want to make sure that we, we are giving a very consistent voice and really kind of focus on who our brand is. So we, we, we need to make sure that you know, our partners, any partner across any platform is going to be the right one. Laura, Janae mentioned authenticity there, and you mentioned as well a while ago that you don't want to be engaging with fans in a way that's not natural to yourself. And how conscious are you of that, that you are just portraying yourself and you're, you, what you are actually feeling yourself? Um, well, I consider it, it as the most important thing that um, it's your own media channel. So whatever you do there with your sponsors or your team, um, the first thing is that you look, look yourself there and you show your personality. And that's why when you do some kind of uh, campaigns with sponsors, I think it's really important that it doesn't look like advertisement. So, um, because you, that's the worst thing that you could do, that you are pushing too much 
for your fans and they kind of neglect it so so I think that's the worst case scenario so I think first one is the content that it looks like yourself and then the the other things are secondary and Donna on that I suppose the last thing you want to do is have fans disengage because of the content because that you're bringing them yes and because of advertising too much that's that's true and that's why we opted not to have advertising in our platform at all it's all about natural engagement and we like to um, refer to the sponsor and team up as just another fan but the wealthier, better connected fan that everybody wants to be a friend of. Sure. That's the kind of environment you want to be in. Janae, if I can bring it back to yourself, and you might give us some examples of the best fan engagement that the NBA has been involved in, and maybe other examples that you've seen outside of the NBA. Yeah, I think, you know, what I personally like in, in being an international is that we've spent, maybe over the last two years, we've really invested a lot of resources in the local markets. We've got 14 offices around the world, and we've got content and marketing people in, in most of those offices. And the whole point of that is to focus on how we can actually tell stories when we do come into town. So an example is over the summer, uh, we, ho we hosted the first ever um, professional sports match between uh, two from an American league, and that sure. was at the Africa game um, held down in Johannesburg. And we worked with the teams, we worked with the players, coaches, uh, to create content across Twitter, across Facebook, across all of the, the, the channels. We did Snapchat, and that was a really, you know, that gave us a real connection and a real way to tell that narrative about why the NBA was coming to Africa and why it was so important. Um, we've done a lot around Chinese New Year in the past two years. That's become a really big uh, campaign, particularly for China, but we actually activated uh, all around the world. And look, we're running short enough on time, but like, I suppose the question that everyone wants to know, can you quantify the value of your social media participation and engagement? Can you actually give a value to that? Not publicly. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I think it is, it is now become a part of every conversation that we have from a, from a partnership perspective. And sort of the degree depends on, you know, depends on um, the particular type of activation. But what we want to focus on is integrating the live game experience along with social media because we see that it is actually now part of, you know, part of the everyday viewing, viewing routine. And Donna, just a final word on that, the, the value that, and being actually able to, to measure that value, I suppose, is very important to the sponsors and brands in particular. It, it's very important, and we have had many conversations with a lot of brands and a lot of teams that it's been very difficult for them to prove the value of the relationship in a, in a lot of different ways, not just social media, but in all the marketing that's done. And so um, be, having a way that you can show to your sponsor, this is the value I've delivered. Of course, it makes it easier the next time you sign that deal. And to show that your fans are actually interested in them. That's very key, that they, they know that this is a perfect match. And that's something we've really focused a lot on. Well, thanks very much for that. Time is caught up on us, folks. So please show your appreciation for Donna, Laura, and Janae. <laughs>